And Professor Michelle Thompson joins us now from Purdue University in Indiana. Thank you very much for connecting with us. Thanks for having me. So, so how close have you come to the fragments of this asteroid? So I've actually been able to analyze them and hold them in my own gloved hands and do some of the first analyses on the samples from asteroid Bennu. You know, as I've been reading about this, I, I was trying to think of an analogy in my, my life, and, and maybe it's like walking through Roman ruins in Europe and, and feeling the weight of history and thinking a human hand put that brick there, you know, 2,000 years ago. What was it like for you to have fragments of an asteroid in your hand? It has been honestly a dream come true. You know, this team has been working towards this result, some people for over 20 years. And asteroids are really relics from the early solar system. There are these primitive fragments from the very earliest days, four and a half billion years ago when our solar system was forming. So it's like taking a time machine back into those conditions and to try and understand what the diversity of the building blocks for our solar system is. So there's nothing that can quite compare to holding that material uh, in your hands. So there's a fantastic headline, right, that we see all the time attached to this project, that this asteroid may unlock the mysteries of how life, uh, you know, started on Earth. And I think to myself, you know, how much of that is like hype and how real is that? So put it in perspective for us. No, this is really true for this asteroid. We chose it specifically as a target for this mission because we expected there to be it to be very carbon rich. And carbon molecules, these are the building blocks of what could have evolved into life on Earth. And they would be delivered to the surface of very primitive early Earth's history by material like what we got back from Bennu. Everything that we have on the surface of the Earth that is similar to this has been contaminated by you know, the material that we have on Earth's surface by Earth's atmosphere. And so we really have to go out and get it from the surface of an asteroid to be able to understand what those building blocks are and how they could have formed the recipe for life that evolved on our own planet. Will this confirm what we already think about how life developed uh, on Earth? Or do you think we're going to learn anything new from, from these fragments? We're going to learn so much new information that I, I can't wait for the next few years of sample analysis. We have very limited amounts of material that we've gone and collected from an asteroid like this. And so this is going to open up a whole new window of analytical opportunities to try and answer some of these really big picture questions. One of the reasons we're talking to you is that you are one of very few scientists who are going to have this, who have had and will have close access to these fragments. You are a Canadian, but what is it about your area of expertise that's put you on this team? So I got my undergraduate degrees in geological engineering and biology. So I've got kind of a diverse experience. And then I moved on to working in planetary science and analyzing material from other planetary bodies like the moon and asteroids. So I've been doing this since I started my, my graduate work. And I've got a lot of experience working with samples from the Apollo missions, exploration missions to other asteroids like the Hayabusa and Hayabusa 2 missions. And so I've been very fortunate to have huge opportunities to work on material like this. So I, I do have some expertise when it comes to handling these materials. Yeah, and I, and I love the fact that the, the projects like this kind of, you know, we don't talk to scientists very much on, on a national newscast. So it's a nice opportunity uh, to do that. I, I want to play a clip that we gathered from your academic past. So uh, just listen to this. Oh, Michelle, congratulations uh, from all of us back at the West we're so proud of what you have accomplished and the things that you are doing now and will be doing and uh, keep going. And it'll give us lots more to watch and be interested in. So that's a science teacher. I think he taught you in grade nine and grade 12, John Cordukes. What is your reaction listening to that? That was the most beautiful surprise. Um, <laughs> I'm trying not to tear up. Uh, you know, growing up in small town, southern Ontario, there wasn't really an obvious pathway for me to go from just north of Coburg, Ontario to working at NASA and working on these missions. And it was because of incredible mentors like that who really encouraged me and 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 really had the confidence in me that I could do something like that that helped me forge this, this pathway. So that is so wonderful to hear and try and keep my emotions in check. <laughs> 
I, I love the connection between great teachers and 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 great students. And uh, and but let's talk a little bit more about that because there are hopefully people watching who have big dreams in whatever field. But let's say science for a moment. And where they happen to be in Canada, they're thinking, "There's no way I'm going to end up in whether it's NASA or or some other you know high kind of uh, achieving place." What other points were there in your career that were kind of pivotal in in helping you along your way? Well, when I first started as an undergraduate, I really didn't know what I wanted to do. I knew I loved science, but I was kind of all over the map. Uh, I was taking classes in biology. I took some in geology. And then it really struck a chord when I started thinking about, you know, rocks on Earth are great, but rocks from space <laughs> are better. Uh, and so I, I really had to reach out and find a community. The, the planetary science community in Canada isn't huge, but it is mighty, and they are so supportive of one another. So I just ended up talking to a professor who had given a lecture uh, on minerals on Mars. And he was so wonderful. He brought me to the meeting of Canadian planetary scientists. That set me up with a summer internship. That internship turned into an internship at NASA. And, you know, it snowballed from there. So I would say don't be afraid to reach out to people and ask for help in, in trying to forge the path that you want to take. Because, Important. The most important thing is having incredible mentors that can can try and guide you on uh, to get towards your dreams. So I was very fortunate to have people in my life who have encouraged me and helped me. They might not even have known how to mm -hmm. how to do what I wanted, but they could they could help me figure it out. So yeah, that's a great story. What one last question for you? Um, you've described what you're doing now. Your access to this asteroid as as kind of the highlight of a lifetime, maybe the highlight of, of a few lifetimes. So, I mean, you're still a relatively young person. What's next? Do you have any other kind of goals you'd like to achieve? Absolutely. I mean, this has been a dream come true. The last few weeks, I keep looking around and asking myself, is this really happening? <laughs> uh, but I think the next move is that I want to do this all over again. You know, I'm at a, a point in my career where having the experience on this mission and being a part of such an incredible international team with links to Canada and the Canadian Space Agency, I want to do this again. And be involved from the ground floor, from the conception, the design, the initial stages of the mission, all the way through to bringing those samples back. So I'm looking forward already to the next adventure after this one, but I'm I'm trying to enjoy the moment and, and be so excited about the samples that we've just got back from Asteroid Bennu. Well, you are clearly excited. That excitement is uh, infectious. And uh, we'll check back with you when, when you get to the next step in this investigation. Thank you very much. Thanks so much.